You'll make the most of this video if you have watched How Neuroscience Challenges Old School Psychology Part 1 first, because here I'm going to talk about what the senior executive could have done differently. And with me I've brought the, your inner piano, the inner piano of the brain, which consists of eight keys, each representing a core brain function that is worth knowing and playing. And uh, to start with, as I mentioned, the senior executive, he pursued an away from goal. So actually he was playing the goal key of the inner piano, but he was doing so in a less useful way. So we need to turn that away from goal into a towards goal. So what is it or what might it be that he wants to have installed in the team instead of maybe a pecking order? Now, this could have been mutual respect. It could have been complementarity. And um, this is what he wants more of. So it's very important to become aware of this and also become aware of these being values. So here we're also playing the values key. These are important values for him. And in the best of all worlds, he would really like to see the team discover the value of these also. Why does it make sense to have this at the core of team collaboration? What will they gain? What will they gain from it in the team? Uh, etc. And he has got a lot of options in his communication, in the way he gives feedback, in the way he communicates challenge, challenges in the future or in the now. He has got a lot of opportunities here to actually prime the team members to sow a seed that makes them understand and realize for themselves that the, these are important values. Now, he could also choose in, in relation to this to play the body key because we send out two, between 2,000 and 4,000 micro messages each and every one of us each and every day. So in a workplace, you receive a lot of micro messages every day. Micro messages are the subtle nonverbal messages we send out when we may be yawning, looking the other way, smiling shaking our heads, nodding, whatever. You know, there are many lifting our eyebrows. There are many micro messages that send clear messages to the recipients, but they do it in an unverbal way. And it's picked up by the amygdala and the brain. That's actually quite a world champion when it comes to reading um, such micro messages uh, nonverbally. So they're being read emotionally and, and, and thus they're being sensed by the person who, who receives them. But uh, this is another opportunity. So by using his body language, his micro messages proactively, he can give life, he can give strength to the people in the team who actually represent these important values, giving them special attention, maybe giving less attention to the ones who clearly do not follow um, these values. And also he could play the successes key, another key of your inner piano, which we tend to play way too little, which is really silly because it's such a free... <laughs> a uh, cheap way to competence development in a team. But basically this could be about um, remembering, articulating situations from the past where they were really close to having mutual respect or complementarity in the team or situations or from their collaboration where where he found that they brought they gave life to something really valuable that he'd rather see more of. So the idea here being that instead of just moving on and forgetting these successes, then you, you, treasure, you treasure them, you show your um, surroundings that these are important. Also, when it comes to vision, and here we're pointing to the future, what kind of vision is he setting for the team? What kind of pictures um, will he be painting? Now, clearly include mutual respect, complementarity, or like metaphorical aspects of this in a, in a vision that you um, co-create and, and uh, build with the team. And, and I would say, there's one thing that's really important here, and that's he addressed the issue in a very direct way. And this is a, a part of what I call old school psychology. You know, let's talk about it. If we have a problem, let's talk about it for hours or days, and then it's probably going to go away. But this is not brain logic. Rather, we want to use more indirect, so-called oblique approaches. And there's a number of books out there now that are really good about oblique approaches. And they make a lot of sense when it comes to brain logic. Because if we kind of address a situation like head on, you know, let's have it go away, we actually strengthen the, neuro, uh, the nerve connections in relation to this particular theme. 
and uh, we make people more aware of it. And this is not the same as saying, oh, let's create lots of taboos because it's not at all what brain-based leadership and neuroleadership is about, but it's about applying relevant, smart brain-based strategies instead of just <laughs> doing you know, the, the odd, clumsy, default um, things that we used to do because there's no need to keep on repeating the things that didn't work in the past, that didn't work yesterday, to repeat that today and tomorrow. I would say some of the core strength of the inner piano has to do with providing, giving you um, towards alternatives. There are eight of them, right? And sometimes you're stuck in a situation. Sometimes you feel stuck maybe on a key. And when you have the inner piano, you always, you can look to other keys and say, okay, which other key would be relevant or interesting to play now? What would happen if I started playing the thoughts key or the perception key or the emotions or the goal key in a different way than I do today, what might come out of that? So by using and applying the, the, um, the, this inner piano of your brain, you always have these towards alternatives. You may feel stuck for a while and that's completely normal, we all do, but it will help you move on, um, move past that, that uh, impasse and um, that's a very valuable leadership tool.